Dear Mr. Nordhoff, I cannot describe my mood when I learned of your departure. I'm not ashamed to say that I cried when the choir master read your letter to the choir. Es würde mir zu Gewissheit. Gottes Wille kennt kein Warum. I accepted it as fact. God's will knows no why. Ich wollte tapfer sein, das Unvermeidliche tragen und doch musste ich unterlegen. Nun sagen Sie mir bitte, aber es in Ihrem Interesse liegt. I wanted to be unfair. courageous, bearing the unavoidable, but I had to succumb. Now tell me please whether it is in your interest that we get to know each other more closely, to test each other. Dear Miss Lauber, our correspondence has reached a point beyond which it can only be advantageously conducted if we are completely honest with ourselves and each other. And this condition forces me to decide whether I, for the first time in my life, should trust a person with things that I have heretofore kept for myself at the very depths of the shrine of my heart. Wir leben in einer schweren Zeit. Trug und Schein verhüllen die Wahrheit. Alle Menschen tragen irgendwelche hard Maske. times. Swindles and shams cloak the truth. Everyone wears some kind of mask. Raw lust and cupidity show up everywhere. And it is a stroke of luck, a blessing, if one can remain straight and unbowed, if one does not succumb to temptation and can salvage one's faith and yearning for what is good, true and noble. I'm Beati Pettigrew. I'm the chair of Music, Theater, and Recording Arts here at Johnson County Community College. I'm also the artistic director for the academic theater program. You know, I have a German background. My mother is German, and she was actually, I believe, 10, 12, 14 years old during the war. And so I would listen to her stories growing up and was very intrigued with with her point of view, um, which is very different from the American point of view. So when I, when Andrew called and asked if I would be interested, there was an immediate affinity to the subject matter. So that's what drew me to it. I also enjoy directing reader's theater type pieces, pieces um, that are taken from non-dramatic literature sources and converting them into theatrical performances. So we're doing a little bit of that with this project. I'll do what we're doing. Uh, and we'll see, we'll see if any of this is useful for Act One as well. Because it's so cumbersome to carry around the binder, I mean, it's, tr it's really awkward. It right? is. I was wondering if we were going to do that during. Yeah. So what we're, what we're thinking about doing is when you guys stand up and you're walking around, you're going to take it as if you're going to take this paper, you're going to take the letter with you, right? The letter will just happen to be the particular part of the script. Also, with this project, we are, because it's a series of letters, we are trying to honor the fact that we are reading from letters, but because that might get a little old for the viewer, we're breaking it up some so that uh, there are opportunities for the actors to directly interact with one another. Um, and I think it's, it'll provide a different performative experience for the audience. New Year's Day, 1940. Here's heart. I'm so looking forward to building a nest with you. For the first time ever to establish something in the world that is our own. A sign on one's door reading Nordoff, and behind it, two people, Hildy and Roland. They're, those are their names. Someday it ought to be a parental home, too, a shelter, a foothold, and a signpost for children. These are not audacious and grandiose goals, but they are in no way easy and small. And no longer quite so private. We are not changing the script at all because I really feel that 
Um, we want to honor the work that was put into it, and we want to give the the group the opportunity to s hear it, hear it aloud, and see what works and what doesn't work. So there might down the road be opportunities to edit the script more, but right now we're doing it as is, and we are adapting how we are presenting it in order to to honor the work. Uh, the trick is actually the space that we will be performing in for the first time. It's pretty much in the round or two-sided, and it's a very, very small performance venue. So the original thought that we had in terms of how to present it is severely hampered and limited. So we are doing the project with two cafe, two old world uh, cafe, Bentwood type chairs and a couple of music stands and some projections. And hopefully it will make sense to the audience and they can, they can watch this love story unfold. So we're hoping that um, at, the di at the diastole, the audiences will be able to experience the love story between Hilda and, and Roland. It's very intimate, very intimate space. You announce our engagement? Well, last Thursday, I went, as always, to choir practice. A lot of people were already there. I knew them differently and sat in my place and talked to police. No one noticed my ring. No one knew anything. It was so fun for me. She did not give away her secret? You know how she is. She couldn't hold herself back and ask loudly, Well, have you still not yet congratulated our bride? Okay, hold. Yeah, and Sergey, there's, there's nothing that should prevent you from just picking that dog dog thing up and swinging it this way so that you can have more direct contact. Okay, yeah. Right? Okay. It looks, it's better to do that than to watch you struggle. Yeah, okay. Right? Just do it. If, if you do it at a specific moment, quick movement, it'll be great with intent. With a reader's theater type piece, and, and what I mean by that is the actors are not memorized. I mean, if, if we were going to memorize this particular script, we would have started a couple of months ago and we simply didn't have the time to do that. So the actors will, will be carrying black notebooks um, with with the pages in it, and it, and again, we're honoring the playwright's words, which is why it's actually better that we don't memorize it because we don't want the audience to get lost in in the acting of it. We want them to always remember these are letters. So, in staging something like that, I mean, gosh, you could easily just have the, the folks sit in chairs and do nothing but read, but that that doesn't tell a good story. So so we're finding ways to to um, make the transitions between the scenes in, in terms of staging, in terms of movement, and create a variety of levels, again, to help point out the text in some provocative way. He gave a speech, but Okay, there's a problem, right? So you gotta take this thing all the way that way and that's what you need to do. Okay? All right. It's challenging and I don't think there's a right or wrong answer in doing this this type of theater. It's it's a matter it becomes kind of a visceral feeling as to what will and will not work. So we'll see. We have another week and a half of rehearsals and we're not we haven't even scratched the surface yet, so we'll see what happens in the next week and a half. The staging at the, at the diastole is, is very unique in itself. It's not a real theater, so it wasn't, it's not configured for theatrical movement in the incredibly small footprint that is there. So that has been a real challenge. On either side of, of the performance space, on one side are a set of stairs, on the other side it's a, it's a fire pit, and the projection screen will be flying over that fire pit. And then the other two sides in, in different angles um, and steeply raked, the audience are the audience benches of seats. 
So it's tough because anytime you do things that are virtually in the round, you always, an actor always has their back to somebody, always. That's just the nature of, of in the round seating. So we have to keep those actors moving because an audience member will tolerate looking at a person's back for a short period of time, but once they're there too long, the audience gets a little irritated. So we have to keep these, these two actors moving, and not only the two actors, but then we have two other actors that are playing ensemble characters, a multitude of other minor characters, and so we have to figure out ways to get them into the world and then to take their seat back in the audience because the, the point is that they are coming from the audience, we're breaking that fourth wall in, in a sense, and uh, it's, it's a way of, it's, it's Brechtian in nature, so that it's a way of commenting on the experience so that you, the audience member, you don't get emotionally involved in the actor or the character choices. He laid in wait for me on the stairs in the, in the crowd of people. But he's not leaving yet, is he? No, he's not leaving. Okay. He, I have him standing in front of her when I move toward the stairs. Yeah, so just, just circle around. Yeah. Just circle around. Yeah, face her. Okay. He laid in wait for me on the stairs in the crowd of people. Okay, just a reminder. See, you both are playing it to me right now. We're seeing mm -hmm. you. There's people over there. People over there, okay. So the more profile you are, the more people will see yeah. him. Okay. Okay. And again, when your actor is carrying a book and literally reading, you also have another distancing effect, which forces you as the audience member to think about what is being said rather than the interpretive delivery of those lines. And I think that's important since we're trying to honor these, these two people. As we just began rehearsing, just, just at maybe two or three rehearsals so far, and so we haven't really, we haven't dug too deeply into it, but we already are experiencing challenges with, um, with the text in that they are truly letters. And obviously they were first written in native um, language, and this group has translated them. There is, however, a stiffness to the language, and I don't think it's because of the translation. I think it's because that is the way that we wrote letters in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. There's a, it is the number one method of communication, quite frankly, and so the elocutionary style of writing has a lot of flourish to it and has a lot of a thought in terms of, of what, what these characters wanted to say. That is so different from conversational language. That has probably been the most significant challenge for these actors um, up to this point because they're trying to get their mouths around these words that are unfamiliar to them and a little uncomfortable because, boy, they have a lot to say in these letters, and so it's, it's not like having a, a conversation or a dialogue in your living room at all. Their nest will soon have its own smell, become a world of its own, and the most secret and best parts will never leave it, while the hostile and evil parts could never enter. Then we sang with the Baltic Germans, who have been resettled temporarily in our town. They applauded like wild, but one of them stood there all alone against the wall. He, he looked at me the entire time. It's not as if the letters themselves are shocking in nature, or it's not like there's this big dramatic uh, climax or resolution necessarily, um, which is what it would be if it was written as a play. Well, this isn't a play. These are letters. And so we want to honor that. At the same time, we're trying to turn it into some sort of a, a dramatic theatrical experience for the audience. There is, there is tension in that, and 
just in the nature of how that is written. So w our job, I think, is to figure out how to lessen that tension and and make it simple yet clear um, so that the audience experiences what was happening to these two people. That's a real challenge for us right now.